the work continues on death, but uh, we're kind of done with this part. This is not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the other parts. Uh, mainly, we'll start off with the hourglass here. So I was polishing it, and I did a pretty good job, and then I kept polishing it, and then I ruined my pretty good job. Uh, I ended up actually... Uh, Instead of grinding stuff away, I ended up starting to melt the plastic and uh, even using various polishing compounds and kept going at it. I just I went from a decent state and I started making it a bit worse. So uh, that is not going to work. So I went looking around again online and I finally broke down and bought a little miniature hourglass. Uh, I saw this before even trying to fix this and I passed it up because I kept seeing it described as a uh, it's a dollhouse miniature hourglass and uh, it was described as one inch tall but it's actually uh, three-fourths inches tall so it is actually the exact same size as the one that comes in the kit and even have this working sand look at that ooh neat so it's town square miniatures if you're looking for a replacement uh, it was about eighteen dollars which uh, mm, so it's half the price of the kit, but it's going to look a lot better. So this one, let the cat play with them. The other thing is uh, I did find someone who finished this kit online and they made some nice improvements. Uh, one was adding iron bands to the handles of the uh, Psy and I really like that. So I'm in the midst of doing that right now as you can see here. I already had these puttied and glued into place so I'm just clipping them off and doing this. I'll put them, drill them back in eventually. But this is simple. Just a piece of styrene. Can't give the exact size because it's just in my junk drawer of styrene. And uh, it's just a matter of kind of bending it, softening it up a little bit and working your way around the handle of the sigh and slowly glue it in sections, you know, once you cut off a correct piece. This one I was lucky, I cut exactly right. But I'm just going very slowly and gluing it across and I'm letting that glue dry down. I'm gonna pinch it a little more glue and get that pinched closed there. And then we could add a little putty and do a little sanding here to take care of this uh, gap. Or you can actually kind of leave it, you know, since it's supposed to be an iron band, there would be a seam somewhere. So there's that. And then the other thing I'm working on is the tombstones. I decided they were a bit too corny for my tastes. So we're going to do something a little bit different with that. And uh, I covered up all the lettering and I can see it's still coming through. I should have used some of my squadron putty. I used the Tamiya putty, which isn't that great for big gaps. And I guess that was a little bit too big. So a couple more coats of this, sand it down, and then we'll fancy this up. So that's where we are right now. I need to finish this and then we'll get into, ooh, what shall we get into? Probably the base, all right? At the start of the first video, I was kind of joking calling this guy Death from Discworld. But as I started thinking about it, not a bad idea. At least keep that look in mind as we go forward with this kit. And so I'm thinking of the Death from the uh, Hogfather TV movie and we can't do that because his jaw is way too elongated in that movie however I decided to do a little bit of work on the skull and it's a little bit of magic sculpt on the eyebrows and the chin just to bring the chin down a little bit more and also uh, death in that movie doesn't necessarily have a big eyebrow ridge but it does make skulls look a bit more sinister when they have it, so just using my, I forget what exactly they call this thing, and there's no name on it, but it's uh, for carving of clay and whatnot. You just have to let your magic sculpt harden up for about a half hour or so, it makes it easier to sculpt. And I mostly got it in place right now, I'm just trying to smooth out any rough areas. There we go, just a little addition there. Looks like Evil Santa right now, or Uncle Sam. Detailing up the gravestone here, and once again, using our handy dandy little David Union tool. Getting a lot of use out of this thing on this project. Uh, wanted to beat up the gravestone, 
And also, well, first of all, I did detail it up. I added a bunch of styrene here and there and stripe around there, a little bit more on the bottom. And for the lettering, I actually ended up covering that up because I wanted to carve a little name in here, as you can see, kind of blurry Mort. I haven't read all the Disc uh, World books, but I know Mort, and I thought that would be the closest appropriate thing for something for death. Anyway, plan was to drill in the letters using the tiniest bit I have, but uh, yeah, trying to carve perfectly straight letters into the plastic here, not that easy. So I'm gonna cover this up and I have a plan B that I hope will work. I have to go and buy it first. But anyway, just use the different size bits here and chewed up the gravestone as best I could. I'm gonna clean this off and then we'll go over with some plastic cement to take care of any of these little extra burrs where the plastic got melted. So we are getting on pretty well here. We're moving on doing some painting now. I'm still not done fiddling and converting some parts. Uh, however, I'm waiting for more parts to do that. So uh, we're gonna move on, get some painting done. Uh, first of all, already painted the body. Black, <laughs> fairly simple, not much different we can do with that. Uh, I'm gonna be adding some details later at the desk, but for the airbrushing, yeah, it's just straight black and we're good to go there. Uh, the other thing is the hourglass. I could have left this as as is. Um, however, I really do not like using real objects against painted figures or models. It just looks out of place. Uh, so actually all I did was give it this a couple coats of uh, dull varnish to take care of some of the sheen and then we're going to detail it up a little bit. So hopefully we won't have to paint the whole thing. And now the other thing that we actually need to get some real paint on is the tree. And going with the Badger paints and starting off with some muddy brown here, Badger Minotaur. Want more of a green tree than a brown tree, uh, but we are starting off with a little brown and then we'll kind of just see how this goes. And actually I think this is gonna be a bit too brown. But you know, for our first coat, it ain't too bad. So let's put this down and then we'll figure out where to go from here. My camera battery died, so you missed the second airbrushing step. Yeah, my first color was a bit too brown, so I went over it again with a mix of, let's see here, Badger Minotaur, I believe it was Cracked Soil. Oops, that was a little bit too hard. Uh, cracked Soil and Sewage Water. So the brown was a little bit more gray, and then I added a little bit of green to it. Actually, I was gonna add more, but I figured I'd do it after this step. Uh, we're gonna dry brush the rest because the tree doesn't have a whole lot of detail to it, uh, at least sharp detail. So the dry brushing is gonna help pick out the uh, bark, that's the word I'm missing, uh, pick out the bark on the tree a bit better. And uh, so we're gonna dry brush this with uh, khaki I'm using, Vallejo model khaki. And then I'll follow that up with maybe one more dry brush. We're kind of going a little lighter than I was thinking originally here already. Uh, and then we're gonna do a couple washes. So I'll be back with the washes in just a moment. Actually, before getting onto the wash, I decided to add a bit more green. Well, actually a lot more green to the tree because we're gonna have a very uh, dark base, one of wets, uh, more appropriate for a, a cemetery you know, scene, dark and foggy and moist. So the green really helps to help facilitate that look. And this is a military green, which is one of my darkest natural looking greens that I have. And it's just thinned a bit and just filling it in here and there. Uh, trying to concentrate it mostly on the base here of the trunk and then a few of the, you know, deeper recesses around the larger branches where you think moisture would more likely to collect. So now, once I do this, a few coats here and there, 
will get uh, onto the wash. Last thing, hopefully, to do the tree is the wash, which I already applied. Going with enamel washes, uh, because I can wipe them off easily and it'll stay in the recesses, uh, cover the whole thing with some dark streaking grime from AK Interactive and wiping it off now. So that it's a dark color, kind of grayish, has a little bit of green in it. And you can see we're getting a really, it's actually more stark than I thought I'd get effect from the bark. So it's giving us a lot of contrast on the tree. And it also adds a little bit more green to the scheme. And of course this is done over a gloss coat so this comes off fairly easy. I'm trying to do this best I can against the grain. So one item of our Grim Reaper is done. Starting on painting the Reaper himself and thought this was going to be harder uh, than it turned out to be. I'm using oil paints here and uh, the reason I'm going with oil paints is because they could blend in very easily and I thought I was going to have to put them on and then blend them in. However, I realized just dry brushing them on uh, because of the nature of the oil paints, they blend in very well. Uh, that is doing a majority of the work for me, just dry brushing it in place. And a few of the larger areas, I may have to go back and do a little bit of cleanup work. But for the most part, this is coming out pretty nice. Color I'm using, I didn't have a, a dark gray, so I just mixed black and white. And this color is maybe should have gone a little bit darker, but I could always tone it down with a little light dusting of black through the airbrush after this. But I'm just trying to pick out some of the, or all the folds. And then if need be, we can go over with a slightly lighter color to pick out some of the tighter folds on top areas. But uh, this is black and we wanna keep it black. So I'm trying not to overdo it. I'm not even sure yet if I wanna Put the highlights down here because that might be a little bit too much gray. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna have to work in a little bit, but uh, yeah, dry brushing this. Hopefully, that's coming out on camera because I am purposely keeping this subtle. But this is actually gonna be easy peasy, thank goodness. For the second layer simply just mixed a little bit more white into the previous mixture and trying to be a bit more delicate with this. I do not want to overdo this. That would be bad news. Uh, so just keeping it on the upper areas and a little bit around the frayed spots. Uh, as I said before, if I need, if I put too much, there are a few spots where I can see a few brush strokes. And what I can do is, should have prepared this before turning on the camera. Um, you just gotta find a stiff, short bristled brush like this cruddy little one and make sure it's clean and just kind of blend it in a bit or blend it away as needed. And every once in a while I'll go and clean it off on some paper. So some of these areas where it's a bit too course we can do this and then I'm not sure I may cover this with a, a glaze of black through the airbrush um, once I let it dry overnight I'll decide on that I'm the god of hellfire I got a hellfire <laughs> <laughs>